Hey, so in this video, I just wanna show you a little trick that you can use in OBS Studio to help coordinate some of your, uh, your, your different visual elements as far as their colors go, right? So uh, Streamlabs widgets, uh, font colors, uh, background colors, just trying to get everything to sort of live in the same universe and feel cohesive, right? Because what you, do, what you don't wanna end up having is like, oh, I grab this thing from over here and I grab this thing from here and I put this and I put it all on one plate, but all the colors don't really work together and it just doesn't seem like it's harmonious. So there's a really cool trick that you can use in OBS Studio. You don't need any other programs to be able to detect the colors that you want to work with, grab that code, and then use it elsewhere so that everything that you're assembling looks like it lives together. So I'm going to close all this stuff because we're about to go to that in a second. But I've set up a very simple uh, example. We've got this blue background. Let's say this is the background that I want to use for my stream. Great. Well, you can see we've already got an issue here. I want to have this Streamlabs follower goal to be able to show me, you know, how many people I want you know, to follow my channel or whatever. Um, but like the default colors are this green and white. And I want this to be more cohesive. I want it to work well with this background. So here's the trick that you use in OBS to make this happen. I'm gonna go to like the background layer. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go filters. And you see I've already got it here, so I'll remove it and I'll show you. But you click the plus and then you're gonna click color key, all right? And before we do anything else, I want you to turn it off. So just click this eyeball so that it is grayed out, has a little slash in it. That means that whatever you're about to do, it's not going to be applied. Now, if we had it shown, then you'll see what happens in a second. Um, and I'll show you that. But so what we're going to do is once it's off, go to key color type, click the green and go custom color. Okay. Now click select color. This button should have just popped up. Now you end up with this palette. Well, there's a button on here called pick screen color. This is going to change your life if you didn't know that this existed because it is so useful. All right, you ready? You're gonna click that. And now anything that you hover your mouse over, I'm not clicking or anything, I'm just hovering. It's gonna grab that color, it's detecting that color. And you can see how all these little codes are changing. So let's say I wanted to grab the yellows on my shirt. We just hover over and that's the yellow that my mouse is, set it, is, is sitting on. How about that yellow, the brighter part of my shirt? Uh, I want the grays in my carpet. I want the white of my wall. You can grab all those colors. You just click and there it is. There's the color, so to speak, of the white wall in my background. And you can copy this and you can paste it in whatever program or whatever. The RGB is here, 232, 236, 225, that's the RGB. Um, but usually you're gonna use this six digit code. Uh, all right, so let's apply this example to our follower goal. So I'm gonna, click pick screen color again and I'm going to get like one of the dark blues like in here uh maybe maybe this one I'll click that I'm going to copy this code and now I'm going to go to the Streamlabs page where I manage the colors of this widget and I'm going to replace that green with this code that I just copied boom and that blue came directly from that background image and we go back in OBS because now I want to change this white to like one of the lighter blues. So I'll click pick screen color and I'll hover around and I'll think about it and I'll go, okay, maybe like that. Let's copy the code. We'll go to Streamlabs and I'm going to paste it. And there it is. Click save so that it updates the actual widget. And now Boom, it's just more cohesive. Now maybe you won't settle on exactly those colors. You might be like, all right, now that I see it, I want that one to be lighter. I want that one to be this. I want. But the point is that you now have this tool that you can use to very simply 
grab the color information that you need out of the things that you like so that you can apply them to all these other elements that you're going to start to bring in. Um, and like I said, that can include things like the colors of fonts, the colors of other objects and widgets and like whatever. Um, let's say you want to add a border to your webcam. And let's say you do have something like Photoshop, okay? I mean, you know, this video is great for people who don't and just need to be able to grab color codes. Um, but let's pretend that you do have Photoshop and you want to add like a simple border to this webcam. So let's pull up Photoshop. I've already copied that code, so it's still on my clipboard. Uh, so I'm going to paste that code here where the six digit thing is. Click OK. I'll grab my paint bucket. I'll paint it that color. Uh, we'll save it as a, a JPEG or a PNG or whatever. I'm just going to dump it in my download folder somewhere. And then in OBS, you add your little image, which was just that solid color. I'm going to put it on a layer behind my webcam. And then holding the Alt key and grabbing a corner, I'm just going to make a simple order for my webcam. Boom. And I use the color that exists somewhere else on my scene so that it looks intentional. It looks cohesive. Everything is coming from the same color space. Now, what I will say is, yes, I'm using all these blues and stuff like that. But if you spend a little time uh, teaching yourself about color theory, right, which is like, OK, why do certain colors look good next to other certain colors? Why do certain colors look bad next to others? Uh, how do these two colors affect each other when they're nearby versus, you know, when they're farther away? Do they influence the, the way that your eye actually perceives the true value of that color to be or whatever? If you want to teach yourself that stuff so that you can play with other color combinations that you think will work well, I mean, like this right here, I'm already thinking that there are some lighter pinks and purples in this corner and in these little sort of wispy areas and even some greens in here. So like there's other takes that you can get out of this and other colors that are going to complement each other. Um, maybe I'll put some links in the description to some sites or some videos that talk a little bit more in depth about color theory. And oh yeah, I promised you I was going to show you why you need to turn it off. All right, so here we go. I'm going to go filters and see, watch what happens if I actually allow this color key thing to do what it does. I'm going to click that blue and click OK. See what it's done is it's like got rid of that color, right? Um, because what this is almost doing is it's like a green screen effect where you're trying to key out a specific color. Um, but that's what this tool is actually for. But we don't really want to be using the tool in this example to do this. Really, I just wanted to use it so that I could hijack the color picker and grab color codes that I want. And so that's, uh, so that's what this is. And hopefully that's a useful little trick for you. Um, if it was, give this video a like so that I know that it's, uh, that it's the right information. And um, maybe subscribe. I've got a bunch more videos in my list, including a streamer how-to playlist full of different how-tos. And um, thanks for watching.